So today I'm going to be taking myself through a full in-depth driver process. We're going to be looking at length, loft, lie, swing weight, shaft weight, shaft flex, shaft profile, head design, the CG locations, all those kind of variables. So let's get stuck in. So welcome down to Elite Performance Golf Studios. My name's Ross Walker. I'm the head fitter and co-founder of EP Golf Studios. And today, I'm gonna to be taking myself through basically a, an in-depth driver fitting process. Um, so it's basically gonna be giving you an insight into exactly the kind of things that we would look at here during a driver fitting and take you through the full process to see all of the steps that we look at and everything we analyze during a fitting to make sure that we get you the best results we possibly can. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is obviously just let you have a warm-up. While you're warming up, we're going to be talking through your game. Obviously, if you're specifically coming for a driver fit, then I'm going to be talking about your driving. Um, if there's anything in particular you struggle with, any misses that you struggle with, I will baseline your current driver. So I'll measure the length, I'll measure the swing weight. I'll obviously look at the, the head design, the loft, the setup all those kind of things. And then we're gonna jump into some baseline. So I'm gonna get a good kind of first data set with your driver so we can analyze the delivery. We can look at what numbers that you're producing from your current setup and obviously dispersion as well. So I don't have a driver because I have a lot to choose from. So I take out whatever I want. So I've just made up something completely random um, so we've got Vista Pro 55, sorry, 65 stiff um, in a rad speed 10.5 degree head, just set neutral. So this shaft is actually a little bit short, so it's playing at 44.5 inches and it's swung weight at C9. So these are all very important variables to, uh, to take into account when we're looking at the baseline. So I'm going to get a good first data set with this and then we'll analyze that and go from there. Okay, so that's a good first set with own driver, which was the Radspeed 10.5 with the Vista Pro 65 stiff, 44 and a half inch playing length, swing weight in at C9. So I'd have obviously been keeping a good eye on everything that was going on during that set from back here, not, not hitting. Um, so the strike pattern wasn't too bad. Did notice a, a bit of variation, a couple a little bit low, a couple a little bit toey. So the strike pattern wise, wouldn't mind tightening that up a little bit. So if we look into the numbers, an average ball speed of 158, pretty much launching at 15, spinning on average at 3000. And again, there's a couple of outliers there, which spun up at 39, 37. 
So let's take a look at that. Strike was probably low. Yep, low heel. So that's a little bit of an outlier. Um, and 37, again, actually wasn't that bad there. So the spin loft just got a little bit wide, delivered a little bit too much loft because the face was a little bit open. Okay, fine, and we missed right, fine. Okay, so I did notice even on the good, well-struck straight shots that the spin was kind of more around the high 2000, 26, 2700, which is certainly a little bit on the high side, launching kind of 16, 17, again, a little bit on the high side. So really, we would like to get the ball speed up a fraction if we can, um, bring the launch and spin down, and generate a little bit more carry again, so we're averaging 262 there. Um, 276 total um, and from you know a club speed of 111 on average certainly know that we've got a little bit more in the tank there to find um, right so I will get making up some bits and also miss so obviously we would discuss miss a lot so interestingly I generally miss left but there if anything my miss was right so that again is a very interesting kind of balance during a fitting process um, if someone tells me they miss left on the course and come in here and miss right. So it's kind of a difficult balancing act at time, but it's, it's a bit of one of those that you've got to have a discussion um, as you go through the process um, and yeah, find out really what's going to work best for, for you out on the course. So let's make up a few bits and, uh, and go from there. Okay, so we've done the baseline, we've looked at the data, we've analysed and kind of seen what we want to try and achieve. Um, certainly bringing the launch down, bringing the spin down, uh, increasing ball speed potentially. Um, and yeah, just trying to tighten in that strike pattern a little bit. So going straight into Sim 2, nine degrees set slightly upright to try and prevent those right misses. Tensi 1K Pro 60X. So this is 45 inch playing length, now swing weight at D2. So a little bit more kind of standard, especially for someone swinging around 111 miles an hour, C9 is definitely a little bit on the lighter side. So let's see how this goes. Straight away, that was a little bit bottomy. Yeah, so it just spun up. But we're pretty safe. Okay. Yep, it's a little bit of a bottom strike there, but it's fine. So for me, throughout the process, I'm always going to be talking about looks and feel and asking you, how does that look? How does that feel to you? But some players are very, very feel-based and some aren't. So, you know, if you're not a feel-based player, then that's absolutely fine, not a problem. We can go through the motions and we can find out what works best for you. Um, but if you're like myself and you are very in tune with feels and that can affect your timing and your delivery, then I'll always be asking for feedback of what you like and what you don't like. Throughout the process, I'll generally be testing different swing weights, different shaft weights, and definitely different profiles, depending on what I'm seeing and your feedback. So that's a very, very important part of the process. So we'll get a few more with the SIM2, look at the data, and again, try another option. Okay, so this is set with the Sim 2. Um, and I probably would have called that after three or four shots. The dispersion was definitely more left-sided, which personally I don't like straight away. I didn't like that the face looked to sit slightly close to my eye. I didn't like that. Like the way the shaft field, um, like the overall weights, so the swing weight at D2 was good. Um, so I liked all of that, but didn't really like the way the head sat and the dispersion was left. Um, looking at the numbers, everything again was a little bit on the spinny side for me. Um, so there's one, yep, that went 38 yards left, but those are the kind of launch conditions that we're really looking for with a nice straight shot. So 12 and a half, 2100, 
that's really what we're looking for in a nice straight shot. Um, so yeah, didn't really love those numbers, so I would be moving straight into something else. It's hopefully again going to bring that launch and spin down a little bit more even. So let's get cracking on that. So we can see the club speed was the same, efficiency slightly better. The first one was a little bit low in the head. It's exactly the same up. Ah, still very neutral face. Just a little, got a little bit more closed on that. Um, okay, so one of the reasons why we're probably seeing that go a little bit more left as well was the dynamic lie was 5.4 toe up on the rad versus 7.5 toe up. And I did have that sat in an upright setting as well, so that's probably a reason for that. But the loft on average did come down, so we can see 23, 21, 21, yeah. So the loft on average did come down, which is great. Uh, so the spin loft was in a much better range. Um, so 18 and five, so looking at about 13, which is great. I think it was more strike based on that. So let's move into another option. Okay, again, so after looking at those numbers, we wanna try and reduce launch and spin a little bit more so. So what we've got now, we've got Epic Max LS, nine degree head set down eight to eight degrees, so slightly open and with the weight in the toe. So again, we're playing around with swing weights here. So I put the heavier weight in the head to increase swing weight. But when I put it on the swing weight scale, it was actually a little bit too heavy. So what I then did is with our switch grip system, put an 11 gram weight in the butt to counterbalance it to bring it down closer to around D4, smidge over D4. So we started off with C9, the SIM2 was at D2, and now this is at D4. So again, we're testing not only different profiles, but swing weights and head designs as well. So again, Ventus Black 6X. It's a little bit of a stiffer profile than the others. So let's see how this goes. Straight away, that's the shot shape that would be fantastic. Nice and neutral, very neutral numbers, very neutral delivery numbers, good strike, marginally toe side, but fine with that. The ball flight was great. Lovely. Oh, it's a bit left. Oh, I don't like that one. That did feel like a bad swing, though. <clears throat> so we just had three really great neutral shots in a row there with the Max LS and the fourth one was way left. That felt like a very bad swing to me. I don't think that was the club. And again, this is feedback that does help me as a fitter and yourself to get the best results because we all make bad swings from time to time regardless of what's in our hands. So if you feel like it's a bad swing, just let me know. And then we can, I can keep that kind of in the back of my mind as I see what else kind of transpires throughout the session. And straight away. <clears throat> so straight away back to the, the next shot. Perfect, nice little draw. Nice strike, good launch conditions. Okay, so that was a really good start with the Max LS, and then we just had a few wayward ones. Um, to me personally, the swing weight felt a little bit high at D4, 
it just felt like there was a little bit too much head weight for me. So if we take a look at the data, we can see that we had a few big lefts and one right. So we had five that were fantastic, actually very neutral flights. The numbers were pretty good. Um, strike pattern wasn't too bad. A couple slightly in the toe, which caused a bit of the left in there as well. You can see on the whole, on the average, that's much closer to where we want to be. But the standard deviation is certainly not. So we had 16 to 31 spin. So that's kind of a little bit more variable than I would like. And we had some big misses in there. Um, I like the way that that head sat a little bit more. Um, it sat just a little bit more square to my eye, which is exactly what I would look for. Um, so I didn't mind the look of it at all. Actually quite liked the way the shaft felt. It just to me felt like there was a little bit too much weight in the head. So we're getting closer on launch conditions. Um, ball speed again, they've all been around. And we actually gained two mile an hour over the initial one, which is great. Um, launch and spin's getting closer. We just need to tighten in that strike pattern and that dispersion um, through, through a bit of feel and consistency there. Uh, anything going on with the club data? Let's take a look. Um, so we did also see a little drop off in club speed there, which could well be to do with the swing weight as well. So 111, 111, and now we drop down to 110, but we did increase in efficiency. Path was similar, face was similar, toe was slightly less up, which is great, but we delivered a little bit more loft. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna, now I'm gonna drop back to a similar swing weight to before around D2, because I feel like that was a little bit heavy for me and I was a little bit more comfortable with D2. And again, I still wouldn't mind getting the launch and spin down a fraction if we can, so I'm gonna try a different head. Okay, so we're getting closer in terms of launch conditions. Dispersion wasn't quite where we wanted it, um, but I liked the feel of the shaft. It just didn't feel, the head just felt a little bit too heavy for me. So I've gone TSI 3, eight degree, again, to try and get that launch and spin down just a fraction more. Weight in the toe to protect, if anything, against the left side a little bit. And then we've got the Fujikura Pro 2.0 Torspec 6X in here. So this is 45 inch still. Felt very comfortable with the length. D1.5 now. So right back in that wheelhouse where we were previously to test if that really is the best swing weight for me. Um, and again, very stout profile, similar to the, the Ventus Black 6X, which I quite liked the feel of. a little bit off the bottom, which I tend to do on my first shot, but I don't mind that, uh, I don't mind that slight fade, to be honest. If that's my miss, I'm quite happy with that. So during the fitting, it's very important to obviously take notes of the misses as well, because you'll all know as well as me, when we're out on the golf course, we rarely hit one absolutely button out in the middle with a fantastic swing. More often than not, they're very slight misses. So the slight misses are extremely important, probably more important than the flushes in a fitting scenario. So we want to make sure that we're getting the better miss. So that previous shot was a little bit low, a little bit of a leaky right, but more often than not, we're going to be okay with that shot. It's going to be in place. So I don't mind that as my miss versus the left. Hate the left, gets me in a lot of trouble. Don't mind that one. First swing, it felt nice, though. Again, it's just slightly bottomy, but again, the result is great. No problem with the result whatsoever. Good efficiency. Even the launch and spin weren't too bad for a slightly bottom strike. Fine with that.
Okay, so again, the dispersion was slightly better. We had a couple that went a little bit left and one that went right. There was definitely, on average, more right bias, which I don't mind. I do not mind, but again, the dispersion still wasn't quite, wasn't quite there. Um, and in an end driver fit, we want to try and take out at least one side of the course if possible. For me, I really want to try and take out that left side. Um, so, again, 14 and 26. So if anything, the spin on average was a little bit higher. And again, I had one that missed way right and spun up quite a lot. So if we disabled that, we're more at 25. So 14 and 25. This is not too far off where the max LS was. So if anything, we really want to try and get that down a little bit still as well, which is more strike induced than anything um, and kind of dispersion. So missing quite a few right. Uh, ball speed was better at 161, which I love. So that's really good, best ball speed. Um, again, the deviation was still a little bit high, but it wasn't quite as bad as with the Callaway. Anything going on with the club? Okay, so we can see we picked up club speed back up again uh, and higher so far. So I would say that swing weight for me was definitely really good. I really enjoyed the, the weight of the club. I maybe didn't quite like the feel of the shaft as much in that as I did with the, the Ventus Black. Um, but the swing weight was great, and that proved it in the club speed there coming back up. Um, toe was quite a bit less up on that. If you look at that compared to the Sim 2, wow, at 7.5 to 4.5, that's quite, quite big. And again, maybe one of the reasons why we missed a fraction more right on that. The efficiency was still good, club speed good, path, base to path on average good, but we had a couple of big misses. So again, getting closer. Um, and at this point, I would probably say, which head did you prefer the most? I would already be leaning towards one based on what I'd seen data-wise and what I know that I can get out of it because of the design of the head. But I would always ask you uh, what you prefer the look and feel of. For me, I'm going to go with the tight list because I know I've got the eight degree head. I can now turn that down to seven, um, which again should maybe take out the left side of the course a little bit more. We can open the face up slightly. Uh, I can move around the weights a little bit as well, toe and heel, which I love to be able to do. So I'm going to stick with that head and try a couple of other profiles to see if we can just get that dispersion a little bit, a little bit tighter. Okay, so we're sticking with the TSI 3 head. I've now got it turned down to 7. Obviously, we've got the Club Connect system here, so we can turn it down to 7 on the actual tightest sleeve. It'd be 7.25. Um, so, I mean, 0.25 of a degree, you're never really going to notice a crazy amount, it's going to be pretty, pretty close. Um, so TSI 3 turned down to 7, so slightly open, weight in the toe still to protect against the left side, Atmos Blue Torspec 6X, so getting a little bit more in between, um, and I've got 4 gram weight in the switch grip to get it bang on that D2. So, I mean, going lower in loft again is going to do two good things for me. I still want to bring the launch and spin down a fraction, but also potentially going lower loft is going to give me more ball speed. So if I can get more ball speed, lower launch and lower spin, we're going to be getting it out there a little bit further as well, which is never a bad thing. So straight away, although this is still D2, I felt a lot more load in that shaft, which I actually didn't like. So that's feedback I would be giving straight away. So I really actually didn't love the way that first one felt. I mean, if the results were great, I could certainly get over it. But I didn't really like that load. Mm. 
So now this is an interesting placebo, and it's something that I kind of think about quite a lot in fitting in terms of how you hit that specific club can make you feel a certain way to that specific club or shaft. So as soon as I picked it up, I didn't really like the feel of it, but I've just absolutely creamed two, and they've been the best numbers by a long way so far. Very neutral ball flight, great numbers. And straight away, that's made me change the way I feel about this shaft. Um, and again, that's why coming and going through the process is so important. It's um, very interesting what you might find. If I keep hitting them like that, I do not care what it feels like, actually. It feel pretty damn good. Again, slightly more draw than I'd like, but the result is, is very good again. Good efficiency. Launch and spin at 14 and 2,000. Absolutely middled. Again, the strike pattern's been pretty good. Interesting. Wow. Wow. Okay, so that even surprised me um, because obviously I've hit most of these shafts and all of these heads, obviously. Um, yeah, and again, it's, it just shows why you got to go through the process. I mean, initially I didn't love the way that that felt, but I just started striping it. Like, strike pattern was super tight. Um, you can see the dispersion there is just so much better straight away. Um, I mean, the biggest miss was a 22 left, which again is fine, 15 left, and 19 right. So they're pretty much, most of those are going to hit fairway. Maybe 29 left, actually. So that's probably the one that's borderline, but compared to all the others, so much better. I mean, again, so the ball speed came up. I noticed one there at 165, pretty much, that you know, we just did not see anywhere close to that, I don't think, with any of the others. 161, yeah, like nowhere near. So the ball speed jumped right up. Um, launch and spin, again, the standard deviation is much, much tighter. First one was a little bit low on the head, fine, so it spun up, but not a problem with that because it's only 17 right. Don't mind that whatsoever. Apart from that, the, the spin after that, 23, 23, 21, 20, 20, 22, 25, 24, 22. So good. Um, even the launch, I mean, I had one there, it was at 10. It's a bit of a, an outlier, but 14, 14, 15, close to 15, 14, 14, 15, 6, 15, 14, 7. I mean, again, everything's really, really tight. The dispersion was good, the launch was good, the spin was good. And again, on distance, we picked up 282 carry on average, 296 total. Um, comparatively, on average, it's just smoking everything out of the water. Absolutely smoking it. Um, 55, 70, 72. It's the longest carry, 273, 287. We had 287 with the TSI 38. Um, and yeah, so a 290. 290, yeah, but we had a 290, another 290, 286, 285, 288, 285. I mean, on average, it was just smoking it. So for me, easily, easily wins it. Um, efficiency was good. Again, club speed back up to 112. Loved the swing weight. Dispersion was great. Efficiency was great. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, even the strikes were, were great. There's one a little bit healy. Um, but yeah, really, really good. I mean, for me personally, if that was a fitting session and someone had picked up and said, you know what, I don't actually know if I really like this, now I would probably go back and I would test probably the Ventus Black again because I said I quite like that um, and possibly a bit of a softer profile as well, maybe the Ventus Red or the Aldola Ascent, something along those kind of lines, um, just so they could feel them. Uh, obviously keep note of the numbers and stuff, but that was just... 
I was, the last few of that just felt so good. Um, and again, I would like to go back and retest in a fitting session just to be as sure as we can be that it is right. So I would also do that in a fitting session. But, uh, but yeah, I hope that gives you a bit of an insight into kind of what our driver fitting sessions would be like, how in depth we go in terms of length, swing weight, overall weight. Um, also, we can blow these grips on and off. So if we did need a mid-size grip uh, to be a bit more comfortable for you, or if I felt that would be beneficial, then we'd be changing these for mid-size grips. Um, so yeah, um, hope, hope that was good. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, see you soon. Okay, so we're gonna look, just have a quick look on the compare page as well. So we're gonna just compare everything on average. Yeah. So we go on average, we started with a much higher launch, higher spin flight. You can see the red line there. Um, and eventually got that down to where we've got way more ball speed, lower launch, lower spin, and averaging 20 yards more carry with, you can see the pink there, much better dispersion. So we had um, the own was very kind of left and right. To be honest, the dispersion of our own was probably a little bit better actually than some of the other variations we went through, but it was 10.5, it was lighter, it was shorter, maybe a little bit easier to strike, but we were getting nowhere near enough out of it. Um, so yeah, gained four or five mile an hour ball speed and 20 yards average carry with way better dispersion. So that's what we want really. And as with anything, it's always good to have a bit of fun at the end. So see if I can uh, get a little bit more out of this. Give it a little bit more. That was a terrible strike. <laughs> oh, he's got away with it. Come on. Got to carry it 300. 300 carry challenge at the end. A little bit of fun. Oh, that's a bad strike. Come on. Get that club speed up a little bit more. Oh, I hit that one pretty good. I right, just spun up a little bit. 168 ball speed. Oh, it's going to be a challenge to carry this 300 on this hole. It's 27 feet uphill. Good ball speed. 168, 290 carry. Oh, I don't know if I've got another 10 yards in me. It's 294 on normalised. Here we go. Oh, it's three, three on here. What's it going to be on here? Is it going to go 300 carry? Oh, just about. We'll take that. Bombs. Here we go. 17 launch and 1900 spin. That's how you get there. 300 carry, 320 total. Cool. Woo, knackered. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, see you soon.